Is this, is this us? Yeah, it's just us today. Okay. I was afraid. Do you, would you need him more? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, these, are, these are my two, these are two therapists. One, this is Diane from the NBA. That's Hilary. And Julia. And this is Bria. Yeah, we've met. Yeah, we've met. Both done my hair now. Yeah, jo Joyce is missing. And who else is missing? Who's got missing? Joyce. Jo Joyce tuned in yesterday, which was good. Did she? Yeah. She hit your cheek, yo. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't. She didn't say a word, though. She just tuned. She just tuned. She just watched. All I had to see her face pop up. Ah. And I'm saying hello, Joyce. Ah. She wouldn't even know what she was doing. And then I told my guys, say hello, Joyce. She probably didn't even know she hit. Yeah, didn't know what she yeah. was doing. And there. I told her, I said, yep, see you tomorrow. Hope you give me a thumbs up. You're gonna see me tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing. She's great. She so. sits on that point. She just presses buttons. Oh, okay. She, <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> quite learn. She, she doesn't quite learn what it is. No. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Well. Hi. 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 <laughs> My name's uh, MK. Mukhtaru Kalbo. If you're not able to pronounce them, then don't use them. No. Just MK. Okay. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm speaking to Ronald. Ronald asked me to come down here and uh, just have a chat with you guys, really. Um, I'll let you, let you into a, a little bit what I'm about and where I'm from, because obviously it's the first time we're meeting. Um, I've been in hairdressing for about 20 <coughs> years now, <laughs> yeah, and um, I started off literally, I knew Ronald when Ronald had hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And you've been lying. Yeah, I knew when he was an apprentice. Yeah, he was yeah. literally when I started out. Yeah, when I started out as a, an apprentice, mm. um, pe people like Ronald would never cut their hair with me. Never. His their philosophy is no, I'm not cutting it. It's not my barber. I'm not cutting with it. That's that. <laughs> so. When I started out, it was just a thing for me to just say, you know what, I want to change this ideology. Because being a young guy, about 16 odd, um, no big man wants to allow you to cut their hair. It just, it just wasn't seen. You know, everywhere you go, it would be like, no, I know you boy cut my hair, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And then you just, you know, you'd, I'd try and be polite and I would change and I would end up getting a, a barber's jacket. <laughs> and I got a barber's jacket and I knitted it up. And I remember one time I was working in. Um, uh, finesse and no one wanted to let me cut it here so I ended up saying right what am I going to do I looked at the other barbers I saw their station I said you know what I'll fix up my thing here see things you clean you know and I put it there and I lay it out no one alright so next day I'll polish up the mirror in a nice side and I'll oh, have some sweets maybe for the little kids that, that come along and I'll give it to the the parents and say, yeah, give that to your boy, just, you know, mm -hmm. the, no one still. So I ended up getting my jacket, <laughs> spray my name on it, you know, and then um, no one. So I thought, you know what? So I phoned my brother, I asked my brother, come in, I need you to come in. Busy time, I've noticed, it's about 12 o'clock. Come in at 12, let me cut you, please. Don't want to do you at home no more. Come in the shop. Even if I have to give you the money to put in your pocket and then you get back to me, yeah, you're going to have to come in the shop. So he did that. I got my client straight after someone saw me cut. I started cutting. My confidence went up and that was it. And I started changing the way I was doing things. And that was the way I was from that point on. I kept everything neat, tidy, clean. Everything turned around the right way. Not, you know, brushes, everything cleaned it off. I wanted everyone to see the effort and the care that I was taking because I needed to look 10 times better than these guys. These guys were like, lay about a couple of tenants there. Some go out smoking, oh, some will go out go and get to bed, then come back. And that was the, that, 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 that was a crime at back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's how it was back then. It was very, very slapdash. No order. But anyway, cut a long story short, because it is a very long story. I could spend the whole evening talking about my life, but mm -hmm. I won't go there. So cut a long story short, I really just darted about looking from salon to salon, trying to find a professional place to work. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult. Um, I stumbled across a place uh, where uh, Ronald was going guy called Audi, Audi Professional Hair Studio. And I didn't think I was ready to go there. I remember seeing him, he, he was the last place I went because he had like bow tie, not tie, waistcoat, shirt, shoes, everything polished, neat, yeah? And this is different, see that? 20 odd years ago, and his barber's doing that. And I thought, no, I'm not ready for them. And so I just appointment kept, system. Yeah, and it was appointment system as well back then. And I just kept going around everywhere else. Everywhere I went, one week, two week, one month, three days, so on and so on. So, I was just like, you know what, we're going to have to go in there now. 
have to just go in because I can't deal with them all this because everywhere was the same. People smoking weed at lunch, coming back, smelling, placing bets, swearing. Mm. You're not feeling safe. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, argument breaking out all the talk times and it's just like, nah, don't mm. want that environment. So anyway, I went there and I said to him, yeah, can I do a cut? I did a cut for him, did a good friend of mine. Um, and he liked the cut. I ended up working there for free. Six months, not six, six months. Uh, say about, I think about three months. I worked there for free, every day. Seven days I went in there, every day, helping him clean floors, everything. I just wanted to know what he knew. The guy was bad. When I tell you bad, the guy was bad. <coughs> this guy did a competition, and his model failed to turn up. So he sit down, he took the clippers. And he start cut their hair by braille. My mouth dropped. I said, I didn't know what you're doing, Frederick. He's cutting his hair with braille. Just by feeling his own head. And the man did a straight line all the way around. And he did an arrow coming down. And then he faded the rest down. I was like, no, fuck away. I said, no, I have to follow this man. I don't care what he does. I don't care how he does it. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm following this guy. So I just followed him. And I stayed there for, for all that, for as long as I could. And in the end, I ended up running his salon, um, went from a trainee to a manager within, I think, the best part of a year and a bit, year and a half. I was managing his salon. I had 16 staff at the time, running on shift systems. You start at 8 in the morning, some would finish at 2, then others would come in at half 2, and carry on until 8, 10 o'clock. And I used to manage that. Difficult, 17-year-old, 18-year-old, trying to manage people that is old enough to be your, your mum and dad. Yeah, it's difficult. But, you know, we kind of learn it. Anyway. Through that, just carried on, um, he asked me to enter a competition. He'd already done competitions, he was doing competitions, and we used to get into a group, and I used to like the fact that they used to get in as a group, and do competitions, and enter. So we used to do aphrodisiac, and you know, managing a, a team that you're doing that for, I learned so much there doing that. Um, and I went for my own first competition on my own, and I lost, and I went again, and I lost, and I went again, and I lost, and then I won. And after that, I liked winning. I really liked winning. Like, I took the mickey out of winning. Yeah, I just kept winning all the time. How much? It, holy beer, if you come to my salon, I've got trophies all over the place. I don't even know where to put some of them. Like, I don't even have space for it. Yeah? And I just kept going and kept going. Um, in the end, I ended up running a salon. Um, got in a partnership with a friend of mine. Um, all the enthusiasm in the world. Our minds met. He was a hard worker, grafter, which is eye to eye. And um, we opened a shop, you know, quite a big shop, and it was going well for a minute. And then we both had children, literally, both had children near enough at the same time. And mindsets changed. His mindset changed, my mindset changed, and we didn't see eye to eye. I wanted professionalism all the way, he was like just bums on seats. I wanted it, all the guys to be <clears throat> training, let them just do what they do. They, they can cut, as long as they can cut, da, 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 da. I wanted a standard that could maintain, that we could be recognised for. We didn't see eye to eye. Anyway, lost that shop. Literally lost it completely. I took money out of my house to try and do it, and I lost that. You didn't even know I lost the house as well. Well, and, I knew I have lost it all. I, and I ended up having to go back to my mum's door, my mom's door so and start yeah. again. So from that point on, at being at that point, I said to myself, right, this is kind of low, right? But there wasn't too many people around me to say, you know what, come on, what's going on? Well, never mind. You know, you just have to sit down and think, you know what, if this is where I'm at right now, the best thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on my name. Because regardless of what anyone takes from me, that will still stand. Even if they take the house, the this, the that, anything. Even if I'm there living on the street, my name could still stand if I stand for something. Yeah? So I just focused on that. So I carried on, went back into competitions, carried on winning, and then got involved with. Um, sitting in guilds, um, Habia, which does the actual standards for the UK, and I ended up sitting on the board, um, working with them, working on standards, representing them, then going around doing trade shows, etc., etc. And I thought, you know what, I need to extend this thing. So I ended up working for a clipper company. I thought, you know what, I want to go and see them, yeah, because um, there was nothing much going on. There was, I used to work with Wall, I ended up having to leave them, technical problems I won't go into for another time. But, um, so anyway, I tried to chase this company, um, Andis, 
one year I chased them every week. Fifth year, just under a week, under a year, I chased them every week. Phone the guy religiously every single day that I had off each week. I phoned him that morning. Bam. Oh MK, we can't do it. Oh MK, this went on for weeks on end, and I was just like, no, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So anyway, I tried to find these guys. I found that they were doing an exhibition in Manchester at the time. My girlfriend at the time, I set, set my girlfriend down, set up, set up, set up, set up. I said, I'm just going to step to these guys, yeah? Um, I need to look like I'm big shot. Don't ask me how. Da, da, da. I'm gonna make, so I made up these name tags, put the name tags on, got a suit them booted, taught her exactly what I wanted to say, and I said, look, it's a PowerPoint presentation. When I finish this sentence, press that. When I finish that sentence, press that. So you just sit there looking good and just press that. Don't worry, I'll give you a nice title. I gave her something like marketing director or something like that. Yeah? <laughs> Little did he know, it was just my girlfriend. Yeah, at the time. So anyway, we went down there and I said to him, Ah, oh, can I speak to your boss, Andy Wilson? Da -da -da -da. And so I was like, Oh, they've gone game. So we went to go and get him. We came back. Oh, MK, sorry. Da -da 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 -da. I've not been able to get that. I'm thinking, Yeah, yeah, just chow, chow, chow. In the meantime, I'm thinking, you know. But, <clears throat> yeah, but I know what I want. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going there to speak to him. So I said to him, Look, I need 20 minutes of your time to tell you why you need me. If at that point you don't need me after that, then you would have had a nice lunch on me, you would have met someone new, and then you can go about your merry way and I'll go about mine. Mm. So, try to give him an offer, he wouldn't refuse. Mm. So, because I, I knew at the time he wouldn't have had lunch, it was only about just before 11. Mm. So he would have been thinking about lunch because he would have opened his stand very early to get it all set up, but too early to take lunch. Anyway, so I've done that. Done the thing, got my girl, done, sat down, baby came over, served us the lunch, we ate food, da, 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 da. he was liking it, it was a nice little spread, yeah, no worries. Um, he's enjoying that, I'm talking away, laptop turned, ping, ping, <laughs> ping, at the end of that, the guy loved it. Once he loved it, had talks, two months later, next thing you know, I was travelling around all of Ireland, doing seminars, representing their company, and selling tools, and then I ended up doing... Salon International for my first year, back in like 2000, and I think two or three, yeah, and did shows, and I've been doing that show ever since. And from that show, then it got me to see other people around the world got to see me. So I've travelled around the world from here to Japan, just doing haircuts, and then telling people what I'm doing and showing off, which is what I like to do. That's what hairdressing is about: being able to show off, have your creations and show the world who you are, like who are you, you know? Do your best, put your best out there and let everyone see it. So, in the salon, I look at it as the same thing. This is your stage. That's your stage, that's your stage. And the best thing about it is, you have a proper stage. People are walking past all the time. What are they seeing? What are they judging? What are they thinking, yeah? Think about it for yourself. When you meet someone for the first time, What's the first thing you judge? Generally, we look for a story, don't we? Yeah? We look for a story. And the first thing we do is we go up and we go down. And we go, no, I'm not like them shoes, you know. <laughs> no, where, where, where would that hair cut? Yeah? So you just think, nah, then the person might do something or whatever, or they might open their mouth and say something, nah, I don't like that. So then you, you move on. It did fit your remit, yeah? So you've got morally, you've got a standard, and then you choose it, and then you say, yes, I'm gonna go with this, I'm not gonna go with that. So, in our profession, the question is, what are we going to go with? Mm. What is our moral standard going to be? Because trust me, the clients have their own moral standard. Mm. And we, we can't fit everybody. So my best thing is, sit down and decide which client you want. Mm. Which client do you want? Mm. If you've not done that, and you've not had a chance to sit down with them, I would suggest all of you sit down, and you sit down all together, and you just draw out your dream client. Dream client. Yeah, I want the client that does this, does this, does this, does this, where this has spent this, does this, does this, wants to visit there, 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 there. Whatever it is, whatever this dream client is, have it down. And then ask yourself, so this is my dream client. What does my dream client need to see for them to do this? Because if we want our dream man, we want our dream girl, then we have to say to ourselves, what is that partner going to want? I might, I might want this partner, I might want this girl, I might want this man, but how do I know they want me? 
what do I need to be in order to attract that particular person that I'm after or that particular client that I'm after or that particular husband, that particular wife? How do I have to be? So then you just start changing yourself and you start thinking, hmm, maybe I need to do this, maybe I could do this. Now you're, now we're looking at self now, yeah? Because nothing else matters but self. Because if we're not happy with us, forget it. Doesn't matter whether a client's coming, whether clients don't come in. For me standing there like, it's blow drying like that. That client's probably not going to come back. Mm. I don't know what to them. I come here to feel good and then you stand up there with mm. your face hanging down. Mm. And yes. Like say I need you something. Mm. Yeah? Now, if that's the case, then it's not going to be attractive. So, we have to smile. Mm. We have to feel inviting. We have to say, we have to see. We have to present the chair to them. Yeah? Mm. Don't, we, don't we feel nice? If you go into a proper restaurant and you spend money, yeah? I wanted to know what it was like. I, I thought, I've been to top hotel and I've been to a top restaurant. I wanted to know what cu top customer service is. So, you know, was it called um, the, uh, beginning with S, down? Oh, the, um, the, down in the West State, that, uh, what's the, it called? I oh, know, the hotel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, gosh. Right top of my head. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know what works in there. <laughs> the, um, uh, anyway, I know what you're talking about. It's going to come back to me. Yeah. But there, there's this hotel. I remember taking a, um, <laughs> no, it's not the Shard, it's the, it's, the, no. it's the hotel where it, um, and it's got, no. No. no, not the Dorchester, it's, it's it's the the there, by the way. that is a nice place, mm. yeah. but this place, it's, it's even, nice. like, mm. you, you spend for a meal, a meal for two people will set you back easy over 200 quid, mm. that sort of place mm. I'm talking, okay. yeah, but I, I took someone there because they got me a big contract in Italy and I was like yeah. very happy with that, so. Yeah. Treat them, you know. Yeah. But that was the only reason why I won't yeah. move back there again. Yeah. Unless yeah. someone else get me a contract like that, yeah. ain't no one seeing that place with me again. Yeah. For now, anyway. Um, but anyway, the point I'm making is, I went in there just to see what it felt like, mm. and the way that they stood and they bowed and they took the thing mm. and they had their little jackets and, and their they, gloves. It's, it's, <laughs> and I was looking at everything because when another guy came around, I had a few waiters, and when another guy came, I noticed the other guy, he laid. The napkin the same way the other guy did. Mm. When he poured the what yeah. he did the same thing the other guy did. He didn't stand any closer, any further. He didn't try to over. He didn't. He, he did it yeah. same way. He asked me the same thing. The guys came and checked. You know. Now, fair enough. It might seem robotic. They all still had their own style because they still have their own voice. Yeah. Still have their own smile. Yeah. They still have their own you know demeanor, their own yeah. walk. So it, although it was systemic, it still was personal yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I mean and that's what I liked about it and because of that experience and the question is I didn't as much as I thought it was expensive I didn't go away cussing yeah and even though I may have said oh it's expensive it was still a fantastic experience which I probably will experience again when the money's there to frivolously just say yeah let me go and treat myself mm -hmm. that's the place but they've left that mark in my mind for the rest of my life to say when I'm ready to treat myself that's the place. Someone else might say, you know what, I'm going to treat my missus for a birthday, da, da, da. What am I going to mention? Mm. That same place. Mm. Say, go there. If you want your woman to feel like this, you're going to get married, you want to say this to her, boom, that's the place, mate. Decor's nice, da, da, da. It's going to fit. She's going to know that you're, something's coming. Don't know what, but something's coming. You know? So, with our businesses, how can we present ourselves? And as much as we're here under the roof, we want to dress his names on the, on the door. You may hate me for this, but you ask me, I'm here, so there you go. But as much as his name's on the door, yeah? <clears throat> so, your name again? Diana. Diana. Hillary. Hillary. Andrea. Sorry? Andrea. Andrea. Yeah. Okay. Right. And? Bria. Bria. You all have your own businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Because when you're hurting, that's your business. Mm -hmm. When you're hurting, that's your business, and so on and so on. It's not his business. Yeah? So if, if it's not his business to be concerned or to deal with your hurting, he may be concerned, but it's still not his business. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Which means then, if that's not his business, then you must have your own business. Yeah? yeah we don't have to look at it as, oh, we need this shop, we need the shutters. You still have your own business. Mm -hmm. Now, your own business will come with, um, I don't know how you want to call it. It will come with agreements, it will come with rules, regulations. It's the same way Ronald has. Mm -hmm. There's council, there's health and safety, there's the law, there's all these other things. So he still has to comply and then pass that down to you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, 
within the law of what is RJ hairdressing, you can run your business as you see fit, mm -hmm. as you need to, mm -hmm. in order to make sure that you appease the RJ. Mm -hmm. That means that when RJ wants their rent money, you're ready for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when you're doing what you're supposed to do, which is do that, and he wants this certain thing, he maybe want this image, you likes the way you keep in the place or da, da, da. then he says you know what I know it's that thing that you ain't gonna let no, nothing get shabby if this is torn you're gonna fix that if this is if this is shabby you're gonna fix that mm -hmm. yeah because you're always on time you're always on point you're always pleasant you're always getting more clients in. you're helping things go yeah and it's the same thing so if there's if there's a quiet lull and let's say you've got a quiet lull in your column in your calendar in your thing for me personally whether you agree or not that's when you're meant to be at your most busiest See, when you're not busy, and you've not got clients, and you've not got something to do, my question is, why? Why haven't I got something to do? Why haven't I got a client in my chair? If my job today was to come into work and work that chair, and now there's a point where I've got an hour or two, that chair's not being worked, am I to sit there and get a magazine? Am I to sit there and just look out the window? Am I to sit there and watch TV? Am I to sit there and just watch someone else? Unless I'm gonna watch someone else, because I need to learn something, because they're the ones that are busy. So maybe I'll learn. You know what, better still, let me get up and go help them. Let me make them more efficient. Let me listen to what they're saying. Let me see what they're doing. Let me see how they're dealing with their clientele. What are they talking about? What are they learning? What are they doing? There might be something that they're doing that's keeping them with the high clientele and not yourself. So we learn from that and we take that and we use it. It could be the fact that Maybe they open up every time they come in. They always smile, they always do something. Ah, oh, that's it. Whatever that person's confident in doing or they're successful in doing, copy it, take it. Ain't no crime. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. it's still your business once you take it. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be you presenting it once you do it. Yeah? <clears throat> and once that person's done well and they're doing well, if you're still there, they're not going to business about you unless you're the one that's pulling them down. Mm -hmm. No one likes to be pulled down from nobody, whether it's friend, foe, family or not. Yeah? And you'll only come to a point where you just decide to say, you know what, I've had enough. I'm done. So, what is that point of, I'm done? Where is that line? Where's that line going to be drawn? If that line is over there and you say, that's the line that's drawn, then you just say, okay, that's my line. Now I'm not going to let no one draw that. That's your moral and standard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I'm not going to allow no one to slap me in my face. I'm going to get up, I'm going to slap them back. Or whatever you, you might have, yeah? Whatever your moral principle might be on that. But there will be a line that you won't allow no one to cross with you, mm -hmm. yeah? That will be your moral standard. So the question is, do I have to wait for my business to slap me in my face before I go and do something? Why don't I preempt the fact that I don't want anyone to slap me in my face and I don't want anyone to ever feel that they need to? So that way, I'll conduct myself a certain way, I'll do my best to be a certain way, I'll, I'll smile, I'll be courteous, I'll be this, I'll be that, because I want to avoid any confrontation whatsoever. So that same principle could still be used within your business. I don't want to wait for my pocket to be dry and someone to be knocking on my door telling me that they own it now, or I need to get out, or whatever the case may be, before I, <clears throat> I get up and decide to do something and say, right, it's time to go, it's time to get up. Where's the motivation going to be? When's that motivation going to be to get up? Do I always have to wait for something to slap me? To move? We've all done it. How many of us have done that? We sit down and, you know, we wake up under a table, not of our own choosing, and then we go, Oh, damn. Damn. I need to get up. 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 Then you do it. Then you get back on your horse and you're doing all right and you're doing the call. And all of a sudden you're back under the table again. And you're like, oh, my God. Again. So you get up, you get up, you get up, you get up, you get up. And for some reason, you're still back under the table. Yeah? But the question is, we have to ask ourselves, not get back up on the table, is why are we getting under the table? What is it that I'm not seeing? What is it that I'm not doing? Yeah? So it, whether it's a question of, do I need to come together with other people? Is it the people I'm around? Is it the conversation that I'm having? Is there a pattern here? Yeah, so it boils down to as much as we still have to check ourselves, we've got to check everything that's going on around us. Our environment can affect us as well. 
Yeah, that's why it's not it's not only important that Ronald does a good job. It's important that you do a good job. Mm -hmm. Because if you sit down waiting on him, you don't know what his business is. <laughs> yeah, the same way he don't know your business. Yeah, because it's not his business to know your business. Some would say it is. Yeah, but in terms of what's going to give you that motivation to get up and go, we don't know what his moral threshold is. What's that point where he's going to say, I'm done? Mm. What's your point where he's going to say, I'm done? He needs to know that about you as much as you need to know that about him. Because if that's not what you're wanting, you need to make sure that you're preventing that from happening. Mm. So you put yourself in that position where that, that conversation ain't happening. We're focused on where we're going. And that's it. If I was to ask you a question... And we want to go from, uh, we want to go from here to Brixton. What would you think would be the most important thing about that journey for us to make it to Brixton? Plan. No. Gas money. Sorry. <laughs> Gas money. <laughs> Gas money. No. No. What are you going? What are you gonna do when you get there? <laughs> Sorry. What are you gonna do when you get there? No. Yeah, TFL planner. That'd be a good one. As I say, if you want to go from if you want to go from one point, you want to go from one point to another point. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, reason for going. Yeah, I would I would agree with that, but no. 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 And if we want to go from one point to Brixton, then you're gonna plan your journey. So time. Yep, plan your journey. That's important. Yep, but no. Anything else? What are you going to Brixton to do? It's a big place. Okay, let's go to Scotland. Look nice. No, it's, it's prettier, yeah? <laughs> let's paint a better picture. Let's go to Scotland. Okay. Yeah? What do you think would be the most important thing about that journey? So plan your journey. Plan it, yeah. While you're going? Yeah, while you're, you're going. So? And what am I going to get out of it when I get there? Yeah, yeah. Mm. True, but no, no. <laughs> Because yes, candidly, it's very important the to know. The purpose. No, be it's, it's good to know the purpose, right? Yeah. yeah. Because the purpose allows you to what prepare, etc., yeah. etc. Yeah. yeah. But most important thing, before we set off, one thing we have to know. Why, 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 why are we going there? No. Presenting <laughs> ourselves to who we're going to see for that, that right person that we need to. Means preparation. Yeah. 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 Preparation. Yeah. Preparation. 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 yeah. Preparation. No. Huh? This is one of these things that just goes over all our heads. Your mindset. Yep, your mindset. You could say your mindset, and I would not disagree with you. I've not disagreed with none of the things none of you have said, but I do. <laughs> because it's not the most important thing. Smile. Yeah, we could say smile. Yeah, that would be a good thing. That would be, that would be helpful. Maybe no one might want to go with you if you didn't. Yeah? But the most important thing about any journey that we have to make is to know exactly where we are. To know exactly where we are. Because there's no journey that we can make without knowing exactly where we are. Mm. Because if we don't know exactly where we are, we will never prepare for it. And you will never get there. Because if we don't know right now where in Wood Green, how the hell are we get into Brixton? Mm. The starting point. Yeah. <laughs> don't know. This is just mm. going to be like that. So we need to establish exactly where we are. Mm. So we've got to look at ourselves and say, okay. This is where I am. I have this, I have this, I have this. So you might have to look at all your attributes. I've got this going for me. This, 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 this. Now I would personally <coughs> say, and what is a good thing to do, is write them down. Mm. Just write them down. And you've probably heard this many a times. Mm. But I tell you one thing that you probably haven't heard. Yeah? Write them down and tear them out. Yeah? I can say this about all of you and I guarantee I'm, I'm going to be right. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The most experienced skill that you have is hand-eye coordination. Am I right or am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> no, but hand-eye coordination. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to walk. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to pick up that, that first shoe and put on your foot. You wouldn't have been able to pick up that first sock. You wouldn't have been able to tidy your first room or tidy your first lunchbox or tidy your first anything, your locker, whatever it was. Hand-eye coordination. That is the most experience skill that we have but we overlook it and too many times we're jumbling things around in our head yeah, how experienced really are we at jumbling things around in our head if you ask yourself honestly can i really jumble 
very well mm. in terms of 15 things that I'm trying to juggle right now and then catch them all mm. and send them back and then catch them at the right time? Mm. The answer will probably be no. No. Joked it. Yeah? Mm. It's not possible. So the best thing to do is stop putting ourselves in positions where we're not actually skilled to handle. We're not skilled to deal with. If we put them down on paper, yeah, and then we put it one there and we put one there, so when are we going to do that? Tomorrow, next year, next month, next five years' time, do it. And we put them down. Then you look at them and you're like, no, but if you did that, then why would you do that? No, let me move that there and then do that first because then, same way, how much time have we gone into our house? We, we sort this out, we fix that up, and we stand back and go, why, why are you putting the chair there? And the person needs to sit on that side. And then you stand around and you fix it up. We all, we've all done that. Mm. Rearrange our home and then we stand back and we look at it and we change it back again. Mm. Yeah? So, if we want to get our things in order, get things a little bit more in perspective, that would be one way to look at it. Get it written down, space it out, put it in a, in a format. And then when we stand back and look at it, we've got that oversight. It's the same way when we're stressed. What the first thing we think to do? Go on holiday. Why? Because then I'm away from everything. As soon as I'm away from all my stresses, I relax, I come back to being me. <sighs> and all of a sudden, you're bored of that. If you've, got, if you've got foresight, if you've got vision, if you've got goals in life, if you've got a reason to live, you'll get bored of that. And all of a sudden, you want to get back on it again. Because you've done enough dreaming now, now it's time for action. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And the thing is, sometimes we can stay in that dream world for too long. Just running around in it. Just dreaming Nothing really being actually taken into action. And that might be sometimes because of our friends, you know. Mm. We can have good friends for bad reasons. And we can have bad friends for bad reasons. Mm. And what do I mean? Imagine now you've got, you've got a few friends and your friends are saying, Oh, I like what you're doing. It's really good. Oh, it's good. Da, 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 da. And they keep boosting you up. And they're boosting you. And what you're doing is you're hearing the boost. And it's good to have it. Mm-hmm. But because you have it, you're, swat, you're, you're wallowing in it. Mm. You know? And you're just staying there because you like this noise that people are giving you. You might be above your friends right now, so they're giving you that thing. Respect on our side, like what you're doing with your shop there, da, 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 and you hear that. So you might not look to push any further, mm. further than that. Because all you're hearing is that you're doing well, you're doing well. So now, you're not looking to push any. Yeah, yeah I'm all right, man, I'm all right. I'm just what happened. Mm. Yeah? Is it because you're getting too comfortable? You're comfortable. You're, you're comfortable. Home. But what happens when you're comfortable? Usually surprises turn up. Definitely. And when surprises turn up, they hurt more. Mm. Because you're not used to pain. It's complacency. You're not used to pain. You're not used to being punched. You're not used to being hurt. You're not used to being slapped. You're not slapping yourself. So now when a slap come, take you. Recovery is ages now. Recovery is taking a while because you've not been slapping yourself. You've not been saying to yourself, you know what? I know I can do five today. Why haven't I not tried to do six? Why haven't I not tried to do eight? And so on and so on. And it could be whatever area. It could be with the people I speak to. It could be the clients that I have, uh, cards that I give out. It could be uh, advertisements I've done. It could be the products I've decided to speak about. It could be anything. All manner of things. But the first question is, what is my number? What is my moral standard? What's that going to be? Let me decide that because that's my starting point, isn't it? That standard there is my starting point. From that point, I can then decide where I want to go and then I make the road. Yeah? Now, regardless of whether I do all of that, I'm still going to need one thing. I'm still going to need courage. It don't matter whether I, I plan on exactly where I am, I do this, do it. I could look at it and think, no, that's too much for me, you know. Then you start with this doubt starts coming in your mind. I don't know if I can do this, it's too much, it's too much. Look how much time I'm going to have to put. Look how long it's going to take me. How long I'm going to be. And then you do yourself here. Mm-hmm. And the worst thing about it is once you do that to yourself, you're going to be right. You don't need to you're going to be right. Don't matter. Whatever you say, you're going to be right. So we have to challenge ourselves. We have to know. We have to put the question to ourselves. Life is a journey. And if we don't put ourselves in quest, then we're not actually moving. We have to be in question of self in order to make the next step. Once we've made an answer, it's dead. It's perfect. Perfection is death. There's nothing after being perfect. Once you're perfect, what are you going to do? Just sit there. Ah, I'm perfect. Ah, everybody look at me. There's nothing else to do after that. <coughs> Once you're perfect, there's nothing else to do. So there's no such thing as perfection. That's my opinion. You can argue it. But there's no such thing as perfection. We can only perfect thing. Perfecting is what we want to do. 
perfect the way that we run the shop, perfect the way that we do our thing, perfect the way we deal with our clients, perfect the way we present ourselves to our clients, perfect, perfect the way that we talk to them, perfect the way that we look after our drawers and our this and our that and everything else and the way we advertise and how we promote and what's going on with the salon. Could this be tidier? Could this be cleaner? Could this be more spectacular? Could we do something as a group together to uh, draw more in? What are we unhappy with at the moment? You might have to sit down as a group. You're a family now here. You, you're in here. How many hours a day each time? You gotta get on. You know, when you're sharing a space with someone, it's important that you get on. It's important that that person helps you if, you, if they can. But they're in, your, they're in your environment, so they can help you. Even if it's the way that they deal with the sink when they finish. Even if it's the way that they finish the bathroom when they finish. You know the amount of time I'm in a men's salon, you know the amount of time men do not pee in the right place? It is annoying. Yeah? yeah they don't. No, Sorry. no, man do not pee in the right place. Mm. Yeah? But at the same time, in the salon, I'm saying, all of my staff, you're going in the toilet, spend one minute in there. There's spray in there, there's this in there, there's that in there. Just take an extra thing. Just once you finish doing your thing, just wipe around everyone. That's just your responsibility, please. Because if we just go and do our thing and leave it, and you just get five clients have come in doing their rubbish, now you're going to set a bad image for the next client that come and think, oh gosh. And I'm telling my guys, look, there's ladies that come in here. Ladies, sit down. Mm. Yeah? I tell my boys in my household, man, don't stand up. Sit down. Mm. Yeah? Because women have to sit down. I'm not having you doing all of that. And mm. you're not respecting who else is in your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because if you're not going to stand there and spray and clean after yourself, then sit down. Mm -hmm. Simple as. Then you don't have to <laughs> avoid all of that. Yeah? Sure. But again, there's a moral standard. Mm -hmm. There's an environment. There's people that I work with. If you don't want that person to cuss you, then know that you need to prevent that person from cussing you. Mm. That's, that's the rules now. That's the rules of engagement. Yeah? The same way you might have the rules of engagement with who you're living with, the same way they might they will be in the salon, the same way they will be with your client, the same way they will be with the person at the reception, and so on and so on. There's all these rules. You know? But we have to manage ourselves to deal with all of them. And that's why it's your business. That's why it's your business and your business and your business. And if we take it as, as our business, then we'll do it right. Yeah? Our business will grow. And the question is, how do you want it to grow? Do you want your business to grow with your clientele? Do you want it to grow with the, um, the amount of sales you make? Do you want it to grow with uh, maybe to expand and then be putting this man under pressure to have to do another room? Oh, we need to now sell it. Whatever the case may be, I don't know. That's your decision to make, yeah? But whilst you're here, think to yourself, if I'm not so busy, why am I not? And what, what could I be doing to get me busy? What is it that I want? Why did I come here today? What is my purpose for today? And once we wake up and we say that's my purpose, you're gonna find you start to get up earlier. You're gonna, have a, you're gonna have more of a drive. How many times have you had a, a mindset to do something and then you, you say you're gonna do something, a couple of things, you just say, you know, I've gotta do this, I've gotta do this today. And then you meet someone on the road or you do something and then next thing you know, they take you off your path and then it's when you get home, then you realize, you know what, damn, how I let that person do this and da 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 and now I didn't get to do it. And now at that point where you're sitting down, you realize the importance of your list. Now I've gotta do it tomorrow, but I can't do it tomorrow because I've got that and I've got that. Now this has to wait till next week. Mm. All because I didn't take value of today. How much time do we look at today and we spend it like it's changed, like it's penny on the floor and we just kick it? Now I ain't picking that up. I'm bigger than that. I don't need to pick up no penny. I don't need that penny. But that mindset there is the same way we're dealing with the seconds of our day, the hours of our day. <clears throat> you know? So the question is, how can we utilize them? You know? I waited. I would never wait for two hours for anybody but Ronald. Yeah? I got way back with it, but to sit down and wait two hours. But I said, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cuss, I'm not gonna moan. This, what could I do with my time? I sent emails, I phoned clients, I booked things, I made three different adverts, I put I scheduled three different posts to go out tomorrow, for, um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Three different adverts. Nice moving pictures, music, all in there, the lot. Plus replied to emails whilst I was here. So I used my time wisely. Yeah? And that's what it's about. The question is, even though something might have come in my way, how can I make how can I make this a benefit to me? Because what would I have done? If I'd gone on, would I have been this, would I have concentrated for two hours constantly on this? Probably not. Probably not. So now, rather than me thinking, ah, oh, there's something to moan about, I accept it and then go, all right, what can you do? What can you do? 
and then change it. Now he's become a savior. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because maybe he's made me do something that I probably wouldn't do. And that's, if we look at everything like that, then we don't ever get, things don't ever really get us down. Because we know where we're going and we stay focused. So once someone's devi you know, deviated from our, helped us deviate from our plan, we just go back to the plan and say, okay, what was the next step? Because I can't do this step right now. What was the next one? Right, so you get that prepared. You know, it's one of those things. How many times have we got um, a pair of trainers or we bought a new car or we got a new top and all of a sudden we start seeing everyone with it? Hmm? Did you, when you got those trainers, didn't you start seeing more and more people with the, with the Air Max? You'd seen people with it before, yeah. but all of a sudden you're walking, now you're seeing it more and more and more. Then when you get your car, you're seeing people with more and more and more. And that's just the main thing, it's law of attraction. Yeah. Yeah? You brought that into your universe, so now you're in tune to see it. Mm -hmm. So now you will see it, boom! Your, your head will just turn. Oh, that oh, some person got that same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone, if you, if you went out to a dance and you had your pretty, pretty outfit, yeah, guarantee you'll see that from the the, the, the depths of the peripheral, and your your head will just turn. How the hell that girl got on my dress? You know what? I'm done, <laughs> girls. I'm gone. Let's go. We mean going. No, I'm gone. I don't know where she goes. She's even wearing it properly. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, you're gone. But that's because you're in tune with it. You just see it and you turn. You've now brought that into the universe. So the question is, if there's things that you want, how do you bring it in? Maybe I need to write it down. Maybe I need to draw it out. Maybe I need to take something from the internet. Maybe I need to print it out, put it down in my book. Then now I've got all these visuals now to draw this energy to make sure that my eyes are privy to it. I'm overhearing a conversation. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, excuse me. I didn't mean to be rude, but I just noticed that you were speaking about da 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 da. I'm actually interested. In it. Do you have any information? Bam person give you that information, you take it, say, yeah, nice, make that phone call as soon as I get home. Yeah, that's only because you was in tune. Before, it would have just been conversation, noise, background noise, just like how we hear the TV and we're, we're ironing, you know? But then soon, pim, as soon as you hear something, you stop ironing, you go, oh, what is? Someone says something on the news and you turn around and you want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's in tune with you. Maybe because, <coughs> it might be because you're in tune with Negative stuff, maybe you're in tune with this stuff, whatever it is, it might be that's what's going on in your life. But as soon as you hear it, you tune in and you turn over to the TV, what's that? And you listen. You weren't paying no attention before. Some of you have your own conversation and the TV says something, say, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Look at this. Oh, wait. Yeah, because you're in tune to that. The rest of the stuff before you weren't in tune to. But they say one word, that's your trigger word. Mm. And now all of a sudden you're turning. Now all of a sudden it's appealing to you. Now all of a sudden you want to hear, you want to know. So whatever it is that you want to know, let's put it in to your tune so you can be in tune. As soon as anything says anything along your station, you're on it. On it quick. One time. No, oh, I wonder what's going on over there. No, you won't be first in the queue. Yeah? First in the queue. So, if I say to someone, can you... Um, I say to someone, who would like to come up and make, uh, come up and stand with me to do a presentation? Do a presentation? Yeah. Okay, just come yeah, up. Yeah, first person, come. Anyone interested? Well, just come up. What do I do? Yeah, we're on the camera. We're, we're here. Oh, we're no, on. no, no, not if the camera is showing a... Uh, no. It's just no. It's not on the. It's not on the World Wide Web. It's just my personal camera. It's not going on the World Wide Web. I won't put you on there. I've not signed anything with you to agree for you to be shown to the world. This is just for. So anyone that like what do you come want up, me to do? just come up. That's all. Anyone? Well, I just stand up. Now. You're gonna come up first. Yeah. Great. Come. Great. Give her a round of applause for coming up. <laughs> <clears throat> Five four, just to get off your chair. That's it. Right. Yeah, sit down. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I won't hand it back though. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's yours to keep. Okay. Yeah? That's yours to keep. So, sometimes, it doesn't matter. We can be afraid of what is presented to us, but when we get there, it might not be as scary as we think. It could have just what we wanted. It could have just what we needed. So, this is what I mean. Courage. Doesn't matter if we know where we're going, if we think we know where we're going, sometimes we've got to take a leap of faith, mm. yeah? And believe in ourselves and just go forth and just take it because you never know, you might get what you wish for. 
And they always say, be careful, you might get what you wish for. You've all heard those sayings, but they come in different forms. And never will God present it to you the way you see it. Mm. Yeah? You're not fully qualified. You're not fully qualified to know your life, your destiny. You're not. Mm. Yeah? Because if you were, you would have had you would have done ticket already. I won't be having this conversation. In fact, you say, no, MK, sit down, sit down. You don't have it right. It's not right. <laughs> yeah? Or whatever the case may be. Yeah? So, take courage. Mm -hmm. Go forth. Seek opportunities. And lay all that in front of you. Yeah? And just design it. It's your world. It's your life. Just design it how you want it. Yeah? Anyone that you, you like, you admire, you adore, you love, you respect, Bring them in. Show them your vision. See what they say. Maybe they might be able to help you. They know. They might know you more than you think. Yeah. They've seen you enough. They've seen you grow up. Maybe your parents. Maybe your boyfriend. Maybe your brother. Your sister. Your cousin. Who knows you very well. Knows you close. Knows when you're happy. Knows when you're sad. When you know something wrong with you. No, I'm all right. My mom, good. I'm good. I'm good. No, that's not your real smile, man. Don't even try that with me. Yeah. Whoever knows you like that, show them. Yeah. Because they will have your best interests at heart. Yeah? When you express your feelings and you might say to them this, that, that, have a reflection. It's difficult to manage yourself sometimes if you've never done it and you have to then have these conversations with yourself. Sometimes I go home, people say, what are you doing today? I say, boy, not much, you know. I'm just going home so me and myself can chat <laughs> while I listen. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. I say, I'm going home so me and myself can chat while I listen. Yeah? We've all had these conversations about ourselves. Mm, I know times. we have. All of us have. <laughs> if we've got a spirit inside of us, we would have had this conversation. I and if that's the conversation you've had, then it's, it's wise to continue doing it. Mm. Yeah? But it's sometimes we don't want to avoid the real questions. Because the real questions is the nitty gritty truth about yourself. The one that don't want to get up. The one that don't want to grind. The one that doesn't want to put it up. No, tomorrow I'll do it. No, tomorrow. Procrastination in all these different areas. I said I was going to sort out that bit. I said I was going to do that bit. Sometimes that's the courage. We've got to go forth and do it. And sometimes we think, no, 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 it's not that important. But it is. I'm realising as life goes on, something as small as your sock drawer will show itself big. Mm. Because every morning you're still, oh, two, two socks. Oh, where the striped sock then, man? Still looking for the striped socks. If you're still looking for the striped socks, you're still going to be looking for something else, something bigger. It might be your, some paper document that now you need someone saying, come, let's go. Look, there's a, there's a flight going outside. You can do it. Oh, no, my passport's out of date. I said I was going to do it. Oh. Now, you know, you have to try and run around, get this place. Da, 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 da. I've been there. I one time I had to go to near Newcastle to get a passport just to go where I wanted to go. And stand up in queue in Newcastle just because I had to go on this trip. Mm. But I didn't realise that. This country wanted, they wanted, I don't know, how much years free on it. You know, I only had like a year or something. They wanted a little bit more than that. I didn't have it. I had to go and do it. I've been saying I was going to do it for ages. I said to myself, I'll go and sort it out. No pressure to sort it out. So I just let it go ahead, didn't it? I still got a year on that. What's the problem? Yeah, but I told myself, go and do it. Mm. But how many times your higher self tell you something and then you, you with your... With your cultured brain and you, and you feel how yourself. Say, don't worry about it, man. I've got this, man. We've got plenty of time. And then you go back and say to yourself, I knew I shouldn't have done that, you know. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Yeah? So it's not that you've done it or didn't do it. The question is what part of you knew you should have done it. And that's the part we need to be listening to. So, on that note, I wish you a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for me?